Okay, so this is the final part of practical three. So we've made really good progress. We put in quite a bit of effort, but now we've got this nice script that works for uh, multiple sites. Now, if I was going to run this for five or six sites or several hundred sites, I don't really want to have to run this each time. But what I can do is convert this script into a function. Now, to do that, I can just put the keyword function up the top here. And I have to specify what I want to output. So I want to output the name, the lat, the long, and then I want to output this O variable, which remember down here, O variable uh, contains the form factor and title range. Then I specify the function name. In this case, it's control one. And what do I want to input into this function? Well, I want to input SID and FIG. So actually I can switch this off here. I'm going to comment it out. I keep leaving the code there. So if I have any errors, I can turn off the function and come back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function called master one. And master one is going to load in control one. Okay, so there's master one. I'm just going to borrow some code here. So it's I'm in February. This M file does a title search prediction for uh, multiple sites. multiple sites um, and compares the title uh, form factor and range okay so let's pop that in there okay so now what I'm going to do is run control one for lots of sites so I can copy control one here now, you could put this in a loop, but I'm not going to put it in a loop. Now, what I'm going to do is, now this is a string, so I'm going to save it in a cell array. I'm going to save that as one. I'm going to save this as row one, column one. I'm going to save this as row one, column one. And this is row one. It's got six columns now, so I do all the columns. And this SID here, I'm going to change to the first one, three, seven, six. And I'm not going to run the figures now because I don't want to create the figures for all of these. Now here I can replace this with two and I'm going to run my second site which was 636 and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this five times for five different sites. So I'm going to do three, four, five. Now you could do this in a loop uh, which would be relatively straightforward um, but just for the ease of programming I'm just going to copy and paste it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download three more sites. I'm going to download 651, 383. And these are going round the coast now into Vietnam. So these top two sites are China. These bottom three sites are Vietnam. So let's go back to our portal here. And first of all, we're going to download 651, which is Vung Tao. Let's download that one. And then we're going to download... Um, Three eight three, uh, which is also Thailand, and then we're going to download three eight one, Kumon, which is also Thailand. And here you'll be able to see where these sites are. Okay, so let's get to download. There's our additional sites. Drop them into data. Okay, and now we can run this. And what I'm going to do is two is I'm going to load in the coastline because we'll need that later. Um, and yeah, sorry I made the mistake in the first practical. I assumed the coastline was just in normal MATLAB, but it's actually in the mapping toolbox too. Um, but let's run through this. Okay, so we're going to run this. Now, unfortunately, the tidal analysis is a little bit slow. U tide is a bit slow. Um, so we're going to run this for all five sites, so we'll just have to be patient, it's going to take a minute. Now, notice I've switched off the figure, so it's not going to produce any figures, because I don't really want it to have to, it's five figures for each one, I don't really want to have to produce 15 figures. Okay, now while I'm waiting, now we're going to um, plot the form factor and range for each of the five sites, and that's going to be our final uh, final step. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go back into here and I'm gonna borrow a figure text. I'm gonna do smart indent to bring it here. Okay, so I'm gonna have two figures now, but I'm actually gonna put them side by side. So I'm gonna have one row, two columns. So two figures side by side. And the first thing I'm gonna do is plot the coastline. So let's plot coast long and coast lat. Um, the X label, uh, we can have a X label, so let's bring that in. The X label is gonna be longitude, because this is a map in degrees. The next label is latitude in degrees. We're gonna have a title here, and this title I'm gonna plot the form factor. Form factor. Okay, now what's quite nice is we can now use a, well, let's just plot that and check it works. So here we've got a map. Okay, now I'm gonna do a couple of other things to improve this map. Is first of all, I'm gonna set the axis as being equal. And that just means that the X and Y are in proportion now. And then what I'm also gonna do is actually zoom in. So I'm gonna set A1, I'm gonna set the X limb, and I'm gonna zoom into the kind of Vietnam coastline that I want. So I'm gonna go from 100 to 125. Now I'm going to set the Y label as well, the Y limb, and here I'm going to go from minus 5 to 30. And I'll probably switch this off in a minute, but let's just check. I'm going to plot the longitude against the latitude. That should have as zero red circles, and that should have five points in it. Okay, so there you can see, there is those five points. The coastline's a bit, bit coarse, um, so we can come back to that. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna switch off that clock because I don't need it anymore. But what I'm gonna do now is um, use the scatter function. And the scatter function is quite nice. I'm gonna do the longitude against the latitude. And now I'm gonna plot this O variable. And we could do this for, the O variable has six columns, remember it's, K1, O1, M2, S2. But let's do the form factor. And you can see now, this is semi-diurnal. If it's greater than three, it's diurnal. This is mixed, mainly diurnal. Mixed, mainly semi-diurnal. Semi-diurnal, uh, mixed, mainly diurnal. Uh, from the lecture notes, you, you should see that. So now here, I'm gonna plot O, just column five, which is the form factor. And this determines the size of the circles and I'm gonna plot that again, and that is the color of the circles, and then I'm gonna use filled. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, now, they're very, very small. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna multiply it by 300, and hopefully we should uh, see it now. And there you can see, um, and what we're gonna do is we are gonna add a color bar, let's add that down here, color bar. Okay, this is quite nice now. So you can see that the form factor here is three, whereas at this site, it's much smaller, it's 0.5. So that's a semi-diurnal. You can see that we get quite strongly diurnal as we go to Vietnam, and then towards the south of Vietnam, we're going back to semi-diurnal uh, again. Now, what's really nice is there is a function called color map, and there's lots of built-in color maps. And I'm actually gonna use a map called JET. And this is a nice kind of bluey to reddy color. There's lots of different ones you can use. You could use hot, you can use cold. And if you look up color map, there's lots of different varieties. Uh, but I'm gonna use jet in this case. Now, one of the problems with this is, ideally I need some sort of key for the circle. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of cheat and actually build my own key. Now notice in this plot, there's quite a bit of empty space up here. So I'm gonna utilize that empty space. So I'm gonna cut and paste this scatter. And I'm gonna go for 100 in that top corner. I'm gonna go for 25. And my first form factor is semi-diurnal. So semi-diurnal is normally if it's less than 0.25. So I'm just gonna put in a 0.25 there. 
and you'll see why in a minute I'm going to do this. I'm going to repeat this three times. I'm going to go for 1.5, which is normally the transition between semi-diurnal and diurnal. Um, so we need to change that to 1.5, and then I'm going to go for 3. And I'm going to move these down slightly. So sorry, I'm going to set this as 101. 101, 101. This is going to be 25. That's going to be 27, 29. So here I've got a bit of a key now. So that's going to be, that's if it's diurnal, this is kind of mixed, that's semi, semi-diurnal. So you've kind of got a key there. And what we can do now as well is we can kind of borrow this code. And now I'm just going to do text. Um, text and this, let's put something, so let's say form factor FF is equal to 0.25. I'm going to do the font size as 15, font weight as bold. I'm going to copy that three times, and it's going to exactly mirror. So we'll go down to 27, 29. Uh, this is going to be 1.5. So now we have a key. And let's run that. Okay, there we go. Uh, in fact, let's move that text along a bit so it's just offset. So let's plot that as three. Bit of trial and error. So there you have, oh, did I move the wrong one along? Um, sorry, let's keep the scatter as 0 0.1. Let's put the text as 0 0.3, sorry. Okay, there you go. So I've kind of generated a little key, which is quite nice. Now, what's nice is once you've done this once, it's incredibly easy just to cut and paste. Now we can change this to subplot two, change that to two, go down here and change all of these to two. But now, rather than plotting five, we can plot six, which is the tidal um, range. Now here, I'm gonna change this, so let's make it simple. Let's make the tidal range one, three, and five meters, one, three, and five meters. So this will be TR for tidal range. And let's do one meter, three meters, five meters. Now let's change this to B, and this is now going to become tidal range. Okay, so there you can see. So the form factor, it's in the north, it's semi-diurnal, diurnal mixed in the middle, um, going back towards kind of semi-diurnal in the south. At the top here, you can see the tidal range is quite big. It gets smaller as you go into Vietnam, and then the tidal range gets a bit bigger uh, again. I've just noticed the spelling mistake should be tidal range. Um, so there you can see. So here we've run it for five sites, but we could easily run it for 10 sites. We could add some additional sites. Um, in fact, you could run this for the whole world now if you downloaded all of the Hawaii uh, data set. Um, so that's very good. And then let's just do one final step. Step four. And let's export to a table. So there's this function if we do t, there's this function called table, which is quite nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to export the name. I'm just going to prime it to turn it into column. We're going to export the lat, the long, and then we're going to export, uh, let's put a comma after that, each of the rows of O. So that's the K1, O1. M2, S2, form factor and range. So we need to do column two, column three, column four, column five, column six. Okay, and we can run that code. Um, what have I done wrong? So let's just check what I have done wrong. Table T is table. Check it's that. Oh no, you can see what I've done here is I've missed out a circular brackets. So it's, it's very easy to make a mistake. Okay, so now what you can see is I've produced this table and it's quite nice now because tables can have a label at the top. They can have um, 
and they can have the name. So now we can see that the kind of what the, the, the form and the range are being decided. Now I'm going to actually change the table properties so you can do something called t dot properties and we can change the variable uh, names. Put this into a curly brackets because it's a cell array. So we can change this. So the first name, the first thing is the site name. Then we have the longitude. Then we have the latitude. Then we have the K1 amplitude in meters. Now I'm just going to do three dots to get it onto a new line. We have K1 amplitude. Let's just copy that again. We have O1 amplitude, we have M2 amplitude, we have S2 amplitude, let's do another three dots, and then we have finally the form factor, which is dimensionless, and then we have the tidal range, which is meters. Okay, so if I run that, what have I done wrong? Uh, I, I need a comma here, not a semicolon. Because it's a row vector, it's not a column vector. Okay, let's run that. Uh, variable names. Let's see what I've done wrong. Properties. T dot properties dot variable variable names now what am i doing wrong unknown property variable names oh i'd spelled variable wrong sorry about that okay so now you can see it's put the names in the top there so it's much easier for us to see and then what's really nice is we can use this function called write table we can write the table t to a function that's, let's call it output.txt. So we can run that now. And if we go back to our matrix, uh, go back to our folder, we can see now, hopefully, uh, let's put the kind, we can see now that it's generated this output text file. And we can double click on that and have a look at it. And you can see it's got the data in there. It hasn't formatted very nicely. We can uh, we can always uh, we could always improve that because it's got too much decimal places. But now you can see you've got a site name, longitude, latitude, and all of those variables. If you wanted to kind of export that into a table, okay. So there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed that practical. It's a bit more detailed than some of the other ones, but you can see how easy. It, and this is why MATLAB is so powerful, and why it's it's really helped me in my career. Is that once you get it working for one site, it's very very easy to then step it up and do it for, for lots of sites. So this, this is incredibly powerful. So I hope you do all persist and continue to use MATLAB or, or whatever programming language, it doesn't have to be MATLAB. And again, I've programmed a lot of this in Python. It's pretty much the same, but you, you, the syntax is slightly different. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that practical.